hardest. I go to the Children's Hospital Colorado to get rid of my cancer. That's where I met Ralph. He's a medical dog. His mommy is cute. She's nice and takes care of Ralph. Ralph makes me happy. Ralph is calm. I love him. I pet him. He makes me calm. Special to him. We're best buddies forever. I love you, Ralph. This program has been sort of my identity, my heart and soul for so long. I, I can't even remember my life before him. Like, who was I? What did I do? What was important to me? Like, in that way, it feels very meant to be. Everything up until that point was, was pointing me towards this moment where I would connect with him and then he would become my partner. Yeah, good boy. When I was at the very beginning of my child life career, my boss at the time heard another child life specialist describing helping children through their exams by using her golden retriever who had been trained to be a service dog. Child life specialists always want to empower kids to cope even when we're not there. The human biology of like why we're connected to dogs, why we seek them and love them and what happens to us physically shows us that, that all the positive impacts of interacting with a dog actually persist long past that contact is terminated. So. You come to the hospital, you have this great interaction with this dog, we mitigate some of that trauma. And then the next time you come, you're like, that wasn't that scary, I can do this. You are such a hammer. I had no concept of what it would look like for me, but I just was so excited. And so I went to Canine Assistance, it was September, and I interviewed them and I met puppies and I, got on, I went on a tour of where the dogs were learning. They said, how about January? And I said, how about January? And they said, to get your dog. I'm so drawn to this, I feel meant to do this. And I was like, yes. On day one, they said, this is your dog. And they showed me Ralph. And I wish I could describe this like magical, like meant to be moment where we just fell in love. And instead I was like, no, that's not my dog. He had been barking and I was expecting something just different. They said, just give us a chance, like just see how it goes. And within an hour, I was crying and telling him, I love you so much, you're perfect. And it's wild to think it's been over seven years that he's pretty much been by my side every moment of every day, every experience I've had personally and professionally, he has been right there. It's, it's wild to look back on that. I legit am I gonna fall. Go, Ralph, go, <laughs> go. <laughs> Ralph, go, go. Ralph, can you say good morning? Say it's Friday. Treat yourself. Close the way. Nice! <laughs> Trying to get Ralph to leave for work. What are you doing? It's always been my vision and my um, dream to continue to build on child life and make sure that we are doing everything we can to keep children emotionally safe in the hospital. I was speaking with um, some of my colleagues who were pioneering this work and they started to share the therapeutic value and how it helps the child life specialists achieve their goals. Sometimes it takes a little while to get kids to open up and kids to warm up and what they were saying is you walk in with a dog and all bets are off. It's the child watching the dog and interacting with the dog and getting to a point where they can relax and absorb what's happening to them in a very different way and really advance on goals in their care plan that I, I think is truly extraordinary. We have to have this at Children's. This fits so perfectly with our, our tagline of here, it's different. Oh boy. I was attending and presenting at lots of conferences and got to know Carla that way. And she was really looking hard at starting this program and knowing that Children's Colorado needs this program. And so was seeking my advice and my expertise on that. And, and I, that's kind of the rest of his history. So there's a new dog helping patients at Children's Hospital Colorado. Meet Ralph MD. He's the hospital's first full-time therapy dog. Ralph has five years of experience and will work full-time at Children's Hospital. And they'll do everything from helping kids learn to take a pill to keeping them calm and offering support. 
I think people look at, well, how do we find the right dog? Or how do we find the right area or the right unit? Or where do we put the dog to make sure it does the best work? And I'm always like, back up. The first thing you need to do is find the right handler. So our process is intense. First people, if they're interested and they're qualified, they have to come and hear about what's the work really like. How does it actually impact you at work and also at home? It's a big commitment. They go home every night and that dog is also their commitment. You know, it's a little bit beyond just the fun, cute part of having a pet. These dogs aren't used to being alone, so you have to always have a plan. If you want to go somewhere without your dog, who's going to take care of them? That's part of that, how challenging it can be to be a handler, the things maybe that you don't anticipate. If people are still interested, then there's an application. The application is long and it's, it requires a lot of writing and a lot of thought. That's so that if people say, hey, I'm interested, I just really don't have time for this application, that's a really good indicator to us, like, you might not have time to have a dog with you all of the time, right? And then after that, it's, it's an interview. And so it's really behavioral interviewing that imagine you're in this situation, you've got your dog, you're in this place, this person says this thing to you, what do you do? We want the handler to know what they're getting into. We want the dog to feel like, oh, my person is, is really confident. They know what they're doing. They're happy to be doing this. We want the work to be really good. You're doing so good. I worked with trauma the entire time that I've been here, and I started to feel like incredibly confident and capable in what I was doing. And then Kizzy and Ralph entered our program, and it was sort of like a light bulb went off. The way children and dogs, when they connect with dogs, communicate is so nonverbal and so supportive. It's, it's truly magic to witness. So after I saw what impact they were having with my patients, I was inspired to think about hopefully becoming a medical dog handler to add the tool in my repertoire of coping techniques and um, interventions to help children. What we're about is more than just surgeries, if it's more than just pokes. And if kids know that, then hopefully we've helped avoid any sort of trauma or anxiety or fear. And that's part of my job. When an animal walks into the room, it's as though they have a skill set that I don't possess. And so I feel like that human-animal team is just irreplaceable and so that's how I really got interested in it and never thinking that I would ever have the opportunity to do it myself until we were kicking off a program to start with new handler teams and new dogs here and I was able to put my name in the hat for an application. Today is a very exciting day because I get to go tell our future handlers their whole life is about to change. There were a lot of handlers that were learning from us that were saying, oh yeah, but my dog isn't Ralph. But Ralph is only Ralph because of what we do together, because of how we, we structure our days, because of how we show up in a room, because of what our intention is with a child or a family or even a team member. It's not spontaneous, even though it looks very spontaneous. It looks like we're just being silly. Sometimes I think it looks like we're doing nothing at all, or we're just playing it. And the amount of people who say, oh, I wish I could just bring my dog to work and play with them all day. That would be the last way I would ever describe what I do. <laughs> the work is, is clinical in nature. It is outcome focused in nature. We're reading a chart, we're talking to medical team members, we're talking sometimes even to the family to say, it might be a stretch, but we want to get Johnny from A to B. Um, here's an idea that we have. So that magic happens sometimes in the middle, sometimes on the way to the outcome, or sometimes a child finally being able to do that one thing that they could not do without us. That's where the magic shows up. To think about all the different ways we use it in intervention. So that could be a procedure that's happening that's scary. 
and we educate and say, here's everything you're going to see, hear, smell, here's what might happen, and maybe they put an IV in the dog. Obviously, they're not really putting the IV in, but that gives them the chance to show a child, this isn't really a needle in your arm, this is the tube. And so the child can play with it, touch it, see what it looks like bandaged up on the dog. One day, I just decided to fill a syringe with water and see if he would drink out of it, and he did. And I thought, well, that's kind of magical. Let me bring this to, you know, Jimmy, who's three years old, who, who loves playing with Ralph, but won't take his medicine. And we can say, we're gonna show you how Ralph does it. And we would give him this syringe of medication, he would drink it. And then it was like this light bulb went off that Jimmy said, oh, well, I wanna do what Ralph does, or, or if Ralph can do it, then I can do it. And I started kind of branching out on that. What other things could Ralph possibly do that are scary or hard or daunting, or maybe that kids just need a little bit of a motivator. One of the things we do most often is get kids up and moving so they've been in an accident or they've had surgery and they're in pain and they're scared. We just need to see you walk and be steady on your feet so that you can go home safely. Hey, we're gonna walk with you and you'll be able to focus on Ralph or if you want to, you can throw a treat down the hallway for Ralph to go run after. And all of a sudden these moments that, that had been so scary were playful, making the environment of the hospital so much less scary, so much softer so much more approachable for kids is, I think, that's kind of the hallmark of this work. And um, the hospital goes from being this place that is full of people we're not sure if we can trust, or full of people that might hurt us or ask us to do something really hard. Um, even though that all has a clinical basis, for a kid that's really hard to understand and rationalize. But here comes this golden retriever who not only is your best friend, who accepts you exactly how you are, even though you're not your normal self. Um, and then also who's gonna be right there when you do those things that are, that are really scary and causing stress on your family and stress on the staff. We've, we kind of transform that into something that feels like play. into the work because it looks so fun or it looks so cute. It looks like something that it's not. Even the newer handlers in this program will tell you they, they saw me and Ralph doing it. They thought it was something. They signed on to do it and it was so different than what they expected it to be. And I think in a lot of ways that's, it's different in a really special way that is, that brings that magic into even your own professional life and brings you that, that satisfaction and that fulfillment that everybody wants out of their job. I think the commitment was different than I anticipated. I could try to think through all the possible scenarios of what what I might need to prepare for or things like that, but it's it was always gonna look different. I was watching somebody who'd been working with her dog for six years at that point, and so, when it came to meeting Halo, I think I hadn't prepared myself for the growing pains of us getting to know each other. It takes a lot of effort, it takes a lot of commitment, it takes putting the dog's needs first and, and, and really working really hard to create a bond. And doing that all with hundreds of people watching you every day and having a lot of expectation for what your partnership is gonna look like or what you're gonna do with patients. I felt like I was a really capable child life specialist and now I feel like an intern all over again because I'm having to sort of relearn how I do everything. What we do is so hard and the, the worst of the worst things happen and, and people's reaction is, get the dog. But what they don't realize is that that also gets the person. And so we kind of see everything from the best moment of a child getting to ring that bell after finishing chemo to a child taking their last breath with their family at their side. And sometimes that's all in one day that we do that. That, that dichotomy, that can be really challenging where it looks like something that is um, so just playful and tender and sweet and there are moments of that, but there is so much more depth to it than I think meets the eye. But the payoff is, is really incredible. It's, it's a privilege to be on the other end of her leash and see the magic that she provides. 
So this is the moment in the life of a facility dog handler. I, it's nighttime and I just remembered that a mom today told me when we were visiting her daughter, who's only four, that um, the night before her daughter was very upset in the middle of the night, woke up screaming in pain and screamed to her, I just need Ralph. And I just started crying. This is essential work right here. I need you to get your head in the game, okay? It absolutely has changed children's and I, I think all of our team members feel a sense of ownership and responsibility for these dogs because of the wonderful things that they see them doing with patients and families but they also you know have really helped our team members with resiliency and they um, provide comfort to our team members when they've had a difficult day or difficult experience with a family or a patient they've helped with the loss of patients I saw a significant impact of the dogs throughout our COVID pandemic response I never could have imagined the impact that they would have on the clinical care for patients and family. It kind of brings everybody down to the same level and I think it makes the hospital feel more like home. It is an incredible tool. It is a transformational tool for especially for children, um, oftentimes for parents as well. And so we can't stop at just softening the environment or making the environment feel more like home. We have to kind of continue to level up. The support that I could provide pre-HALO, it was good. I think I've always been a good child life specialist, but the depth that I can provide as far as support now, you know, there have been several patients and families who I've worked with who said, you know, without HALO, I don't know how my child would have gotten through all of these therapy sessions. I don't know how we would have ever broached the topic of how to tell people what happened or about her trauma or her injury if you and Halo hadn't sat with her and had them practice with Halo what they were going to tell people. I'm able to go much deeper with what I offer as far as emotional support and preparation and able to really get a lot more out of the patients and families I work with because they are connected to Halo and they trust her and they inherently then trust me. get a visit from one of the dogs like Ralph, it felt like I got to escape reality for a little bit. I felt like a normal kid and I got to pretend that I wasn't in the hospital anymore. On days when Ralph wasn't even with me, he helped me. His handler, Kizzy, gave me one of these little stuffed medical dogs and even took a picture with the two of us and I would just keep these beside my bed and whenever I was having a tough time, I would just look at them and they were just reminders of the joy that Ralph would bring me and I felt so much better. <laughs> When I first started here, Carla said, well, what's your dream? Like, list off the things you want to see happen. And one of the things at the top of the list was a dog park. We are asking a lot of these dogs. When our dogs sit through a very painful, tense procedure for an hour plus, or when they are with a family who is in deep grief, and they are solid, and they are stoic, and they are just present for whatever people need, we have to turn around and let them be dogs. We have to go outside. We have to go throw a ball. She's <laughs> like, how do I get in on this? We have to make sure that they're, they also are having such a great time, that they always want to come back the next day. And we certainly did have to make that case, right? But as soon as we made the case, it was like everybody said, we, how soon can we do this? We have to break ground. We have to offer this. Like this is, you know, we are investing in this program to, to make dogs available to patients and families and team members. But what are we investing in for the dogs themselves? And this is the answer. <laughs> We got support from donors and from our leadership to build a canine respite area where the dogs can go be dogs. And what's fun there is we still can tie it to the patients and families because we're putting um, cameras in there so that it can be broadcast live into the children's room. Ralph, Halo, and Galaxy, and all of our prescription pets have helped remind us that better days are ahead. As you can see, it's very fitting that we provide the Canine Respite Park as an area dedicated to our medical dogs and prescription pets. It's been so successful in the first two years and there's a high demand. 
we've been so fully supported by our leadership. We've also been really supported by donors in the community who want to help us maintain the program. We, in our current state, like I said, have three dogs and we are currently looking to expand the program and we'll be adding to some of our other locations so that children, regardless of where they go in our system, they'll be able to experience the benefits of this program. It's growing quicker than I ever could have imagined, honestly. When I started doing this, I thought, well, I'm gonna be like one of the only people that ever does this. This is so weird. And then it was such a hit. And you know, it's sort of word of mouth. Like one person is like presenting at a conference and, and that's that's how I got my dog is one person shared their knowledge and then, and then I shared my knowledge. And I think the more people share it, the more they present at conferences, the more they tell the story, the more they get out there and say, we are changing outcomes for patients. We are making healthcare less terrifying for kids. We are making kids feel more successful and more proud of themselves. Who doesn't want to get on board with that, right? So it's. I think it will continue to grow at warp speed. I think in a couple of years, it's going to be the new standard, and, and especially, certainly pediatrics, that um, you're, it's, you're going to be hard pressed in a couple of years to find a pediatric hospital that doesn't offer a program like this, but at least I hope so, because I think that's the right thing by kids and, and certainly by families. When your world is turned upside down, there's nowhere for it to go but to slowly turn right side up again. For Piper, that process started four days after her diagnosis when this dog walked into our room. And Dur Ralph, the Center for Cancer and Blood Disorders official doctor. Seven months later, through the highest of highs and lowest of lows, Ralph and Kizzy were there. Kizzy and Ralph, you have given us glimpses of having our little girl back. The adorable Ralph, she'd repeat over and over, full of laughs and giggles. Took us back to a place before diagnosis and before treatment um, where fear had crept in. You are a joy and a lifeline for her and for us. And we got to see what we missed so much again, which was Piper as herself again, lost in a moment without worry. Thanks for being my best buddy. Woof you, Ralph. XOXO.